Hi, I'm Martin here. Today, we're going to install the an upgraded intake manifold. This intake manifold is what you'd find on your 08 and up 4.7 liters. Now, this intake manifold is even better than the 02 uh, 4.7 liter HO intake manifold. When they did that, they also went to a fly-by-wire th uh, throttle body. And what that means, there is no more throttle cable. So in order for you to put your older throttle body on there, because that's what you're going to need to do, airram.com down in Florida, he sells the bracket and the uh, adapter plate to accept your thr throttle body. And they'll fit a 68 to 72 millimeter. Now I made these and it, just to be honest with you, it's a lot of work. Well, I'm going to show you how to tear everything apart here, and we're going to try to stuff this thing in there. Hopefully we won't have too much problem. All right, let's get started. Okay, so remove your air silencer box or your air intake tube, whatever you've got right now. Now you may have noticed, if you haven't seen this video before, um, I built my own RAM air system. And that's what this is here. I'll put a link to that one. You can start by also unplugging all your coils and any other connectors. Simply by depressing the tab on the top and pulling. and also disconnect all your fuel injectors. And this is done in the same manner. There's a tab. Simply push and pull. Keep pressing. Just by depressing this tab right here and pulling. Remove your connectors that are on the throttle body in the same manner. There's a tab, locking tab there. Just press and remove. Pull any vacuum hose off. Then disconnect your throttle cable and your cruise control cable. Simply pull that up. Like so. Now to remove your cables from the intake manifold itself in this bracket, look right, there's a little locking tab right down here. You're going to depress that tab and you'll be able to slide the cables over. And then 
this one and slides right out. Go ahead and remove all your coils. It's a 10 millimeter socket. remove the four bolts that hold in the fuel rail, two on each side. Next, you'll want to remove your serpentine belt because we're going to have to remove the air conditioned compressor and the alternator out of the way. Now what I got here is a flat bar that I just welded <clears throat> a socket on and you can use just a normal ratchet here with a 15 will do it just fine as well so just pulling that and I'm able to remove the belt from the pulley just like that you don't need to remove the belt entirely just pull it off the top of the AC in your alternator. Next, disconnect the uh, connector here on the AC, pushing that locking tab over, and then depressing the tab, and remove that connector. Okay. We can uh, disconnect the alternator here, cable, and there's a connector on the back of the alternator as well with a locking tab. There we go. Okay, I'm going to remove the battery cable. At Right now, I don't have the battery disconnected, so remember that. I mean, this, you do not want to touch ground with this. If you like, go ahead and disconnect the battery. Remove the negative first, then the positive. Now, just to prevent any shorts, I'm just going to wrap that up with some tape for right now. There we go. Okay, now remove the bolts that are holding your AC into place. That one there was a 13 millimeter. There's two more, which are a 15. You, might, you may find it necessary uh, to get a pry bar to remove the AC compressor. There we go. And we just want to pull this off to the side. As you can see, now it really opens this up. As soon as we get the alternator out of the way, that will really give us a lot of room to pull this intake out of here. Three bolts hold on the alternator, two 15s and a 13. on there kind of snug. A pry bar definitely helps. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and remove these connectors. That's your engine coolant temperature sensor. This is your MAP sensor. There it goes.
All right, now we can lift the fuel rail out of the way. Remember, the fuel rail is still under pressure at this time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and depressurize the fuel system here. I am going to go ahead and uh, disconnect it from the line, but we got to get rid of the pressure first. Gently press the Schrader. Okay, this vehicle has been sitting here for, well, a good 12 hours or more and it seems like the pressure has bled off already be careful that if you just turned off your vehicle you know recently there can be a you know nearly 50 pounds of pressure in there so be cautious of that okay I got a set of tools here made to disconnect the fuel lines um, this is for the quick connects type fuel lines. You see how easy that was? Okay, now we can pull the fuel rail out of here. Okay, I find it necessary to remove the temperature sensor here. Right here is the plug I got. Okay, you're not going to lose any. Wow, that's wild. It's, I can see it there. Okay. One more thing. Disconnect your breather hose here to your PVC valve that comes up to the fill tube here. Oh, got it out of there. Um, <laughs> you can see that you end up collecting things down underneath this intake manifold. We'll get that cleaned up too. Okay, I went ahead and cleaned it up down here, vacuumed it all out, cleaned the top of the ports, and I just uh, put duct tape on them for right now. And I got some bad news. I tried sliding that uh, intake manifold in there, and it does not fit. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's because it is actually taller, um, the way it's designed. It's very similar to the HO uh, intake manifold of O2. So I got to switch to plan B. Most likely, I'm going to 
disconnect the motor mounts, lower the engine as much as it will allow me to, and then I think I can slide it in. Now I did read stuff on the internet that uh, apparently one person ended up cutting the cowl, this portion right here, and then put it in. I don't want to do that. If I, if I can get it in by just disconnecting the motor mounts, which may seem like a lot of work, um, so be it. You know, that's just the way it is. All right, so that's what I'm going to go, that's what I'm going to do now. Um, oh well. Here's the two manifolds side by side, and you can see. There's definitely a height difference right here. What's causing that is how far these runners come way down here. So it's making it that much harder to get that intake manifold in there. Another thing I noticed the difference is right back here. Look how much longer or I should say shorter, the 08 intake is. It, I did measure it going off of this bolt right here on both sides, and it's uh, just half an inch. It looks more than that, but I might have that one pulled back. There we go. I'm going to show you what I got going on. I went ahead and raised the vehicle up. Got jack stands here on the cross member using a hydraulic jack. And I got a piece of wood on the oil pan there. Using the hydraulic jack, I'm raising up the motor just to take the weight off of it. So right now, okay. And then you come under here, got your 18 millimeter socket. And the ratchet, I had a, a wrench on this side, and you're gonna remove the nut, and then you want to remove, raise the vehicle just to the point where you can pull these bolts out of here. And then we're gonna lower the engine down very gently, and see if we can get that uh, oil, um, see if we can get that intake in there. I'm doing that on both sides. I've already got this bolt here see right there I got it part way out already okay I've lowered the engine down and you can see the motor mount right there and then where it bolts up to right above it, it probably drop one inch, maybe one and a quarter inches there. And that should be all we need. All right, I got the manifold here. We're just gonna test fit it, make sure it fits. Look at that, no problem. That way you don't have to cut up the cowl or anything. That's great. All right. Okay, I'm going to pull this back out, get the gaskets installed. The intake came with a location for an EGR. Well, we'll need to plug that. Now, the best thing I found, and also the lightest weight and cheapest, is to get yourself a three-quarter inch plug for PVC. This was white. I just spray painted it black. And it is a perfect fit in here. Now I'm not going to glue it in using PVC glue. I'm just going to simply put a film of the RTV black on here and push it in here.
there we go and there's no reason to uh, use a like a PVC glue because that would make it definitely permanent for whatever reason you may want to take this out and we could easily still get this out we stick a wrench on here give this a turn and to break the seal and we'd okay. have it out of one here. One of the things we need to do putting this manifold in here is you got the PVC tube right here and you can see where it is located here well it's got to get moved to this location up here you know where it would be back here uh, on that intake but so what you can do we're going to remove that you still use this elbow place it up here here's the original hose right here and if you lay that about where it would be going it ends up like that then I also did grab another piece of uh, PVC tubing off another motor and what I'm going to do is just cut this one little portion of it right there okay just taking a knife Cut that off. This is all we need right there. Now we can ram, shove this part into here. Just like so. I found this, uh, it's like a PVC hose off, I think it was a Durango or it might have been a, uh, a Dakota. Or a ram. Heck, I, I can't even remember. <laughs> anyway, it, it's pretty much the same, the right size. Just like that. And as you can see, that'll get us down here where we want to be. And that should take care of the PVC hose problem there. All right, the other thing we got to deal with, when you get this intake, these sleeves will not be in there it's just the big hole without the sleeve in it and it's probably because of the style of bolt they used it's probably something might have been like this now I pulled this out of my 04 intake manifold these come out of the 02 and earlier intake manifolds um, if you're using this style opposed to these you're going to end up needing a bunch of this one right here. It has a smaller diameter hole opposed to, you notice this one right here. It's a little bit larger than that one there. Well, this smaller one, you're only going to find one of these in your intake manifold that you have if you have these style of sleeves in there. And here you're going to need five more. Um, so what I ended up doing was going out to pick apart and going up to the intake manifolds and you, you know, you pry these out of there. And they're not hard to get out. Uh, you, see? They come right out. Now, the reason you can't use most of the other ones is the outside diameter of the other ones are a lot larger. There. See these small ones? It does not fit in that hole. It fits loose. Boom. You want them to fit snug. So that one there fits just perfect in there. So basically, if you got this intake, the, if you have your older intake with these sleeves, three of the existing ones you have will work in the intake manifold. And you're going to need five more of these ones with the smaller hole in it. So I went up to, out to pick a part and got a bunch of them. And it's always in, on the driver's side or your left side, the middle one back is where you're going to find this one 
Or, if you have like the 03 or 04 intake on there currently, you got this type of bolt right here. And you can just pull these out. You kind of got to walk them out. And I'll show you. There. And you can use these in your intake manifold. This might be a way to go. Okay, and of course we're going to want to put new gaskets on here. I got a uh, Felpro kit. Comes with the eight of them. Before installing those, make sure this groove is nice and clean. And they're very easy to put in. And you're literally just putting it in there like that. And go ahead and start the two bolts that are in the intake manifold. Okay, now go ahead and start returning some of the bolts here. Get them all started. Just snap that right back on. And bring this around here like so. Just like that. Okay, you return your cruise control cable. Slide that over. Grab your throttle cable here. That little tab right there facing downward. And it locks into place. Now I've got to remove this one bolt here. I'm going to hook the uh, dipstick two bracket here up to there. Now, before it was quite a ways away from that. I, what I did is I was just grabbing the dipstick tube right here and just pushing on it, kind of pulsating it back. And it would just slowly... You're tweaking it back that way. You're not putting a kink in it or nothing, but you are putting a bend in that tube back there, just giving it more of an arc as it comes around. And you'll find that it, it will bolt right up to this bolt right there. Yeah, nice fit. Well, it isn't one thing, it's another. Um, you ought to be glad I'm installing this and showing you all the things you're going to run into this is going to make it so much easier for you um, right here okay you got your map sensor I'm going to plug it in look what's happening
sitting the fuel rail. So, so what the heck am I going to do now? And I think I got an idea. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to make one small mod. The intake manifold right there is a little plastic tab. I'll show you that. Go ahead and remove your snap sensors, just the one screw. Just like that. Just this little tab. Yeah, one screw will remove that. Yeah, I mean, that's how tight this is in there. It's gonna work. I uh, decided to cut off the very top of that connector. That was that locking, that red locking tab, and that. Uh, took away probably a good 3 16 of an inch of material. So, I'll just show you how that works now. As you can see, it still locks on. And now there's some clearance there. Alright, I got the engine lowered back down, the motor mount bolts are put back into place and everything underneath is all done that I did disconnect. I'm going to go ahead and return the uh, AC compressor, put the alternator back in place and get the serpentine belt back on. And then we're going to get the new throttle body put on or the throttle body adapter with the 68 millimeter throttle body and we're getting really close to firing this back up. So what I decided to do is this piece of aluminum was on here like so and it was unnecessary. This is my uh, second adapter that I've built. And so before we go to install it, I thought I'd cut that off and I have sanded all the, the scratch marks from the or saw marks off and I just used a drum tight. Uh, <laughs> you, you scared me. A sander there. And then using a palm sander to kind of finish it off. And followed by a polishing wheel. So I got. Mm. Yep. <laughs> so I got Lord, this side looking pretty so good. Happy. And this side here, we still need to do this one here. Actually, we're going to do this side here. And Shelby decided she wants to polish this side here. So we're going to let her do it. All right. Okay, we're going to get this set up in here. Question mark. Okay. Um, so th this is going to be like the second time I ever polish something. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. okay. We'll get that set up. Okay. So. Before I start polishing right here, I want to make sure my eyes stay safe. And if you do this at home, you should put these on too. <laughs> Keep your eyes safe. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? Then you're going to want to get your polish and your little polishing thing. And you're going to want to hold it by the silver part. And then you'll get it started up. It goes very fast. That's your warning. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up here with some polish on there. And you're going to want to start polishing one step here. Okay. There you go. That. 
on one area for just a bit and then you can move on to another area. Get some more polish on there. Yep, I think you did a pretty good job. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs> All right, right here. And now you can take off your safety goggles. So you can actually see your work. <laughs> All right, well Shelby enjoys helping her dad out once in a while and doing some little cool projects. So that was fun. Now, you know, I built this particular adapter. This is my second, like, revision of this adapter. Now, the one thing about it, it's a very straight shot. There's no, not a big uh, change in height. Air doesn't have to change its direction very much with this. Um, now, the one thing about it, though, you do have to make a mod to your throttle body because the way the throttle body sits on here like so if you notice I got that bolt hole way down here okay because of that this portion of the throttle body hits the intake manifold so you got to actually grind some of this away 
you know, and I don't think that's such a big deal. For one, you can't see it because it sits so low down there. And now if you flip it around, you can see right there. And there's enough meat there on that. You know, you're still going to get a good bite. Like that. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take a flapper disc or whatever, file this down as much as I need to, and no more. So we can get that on there. Now, I know I didn't get that very pretty as far as level and stuff, but yes, that, that definitely did do it. Okay, I got uh, four Allen screws here. And just attach it on here. Okay. Now, my adapter doesn't have the groove cut into it, you know, for that fancy O-ring that goes around here, like you do on your uh, stock throttle body, or uh, I'm sorry, on your stock intake. So, what I've done before, I got this Moto seal, and um, I'm just going to put a thin layer of that on there, and that actually does a good job. some of this stuff back up. All right, I got the throttle body. You know, the, everything's hooked up to it. I'm just temporarily plugging in a uh, air temperature sensor right here just so I, I don't throw a code. And I just want to fire this up and make sure everything runs okay. you have it so you can get the 08 intake in here without having to cut the cowl up and I mean it's a little bit more work than let's say you had a Durango or a Dakota because those you can see the entire intake manifold you'll have no problem get change putting any 08 intake on the older Durangos and Dakotas on the Grand Cherokee all you got to do is pull those two motor mounts bolts at the bottom drop your motor just like an inch or so and you'll get this right in here now 
I don't know if you can see this, but I do not have the throttle cable or the uh, cruise control cable hooked up. And the reason is, I did not design this bracket for the for the cables around this throttle body and that bracket. I actually have another throttle body in mind. I've actually got it all built, ready to go on. I just wanted to show you, for those that want to put your stock or a larger aftermarket throttle body on here with the 08 and newer intake. Okay? So, if you haven't subscribed to me before, hit that subscribe button down there and that little bell symbol, hit that. And that way you're going to see, you'll get notifications of the upcoming videos I got with the, what I call a huge upgrade as far as throttle bodies go. So, I hope you liked that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And thanks again for watching.